In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Entity Framework Core with SQLite to add a persistent cache to your Blazor WebAssembly applications. And to demonstrate this, I made a very, very simple Blazor WASM app. You can see here when I come to the main page, I'm just going to refresh. It creates an initial task. Every time I click the refresh button, it adds a new task. If I navigate and come back, new tasks get added every time. I come back, but the problem is if we refresh the page, it all goes away because it's in memory. Let's take a look at the code. The only customization here is adding the to-do service. The to-do service itself is just a hack together class that has a list of to-do items. It'll add new to-do items and kind of artificially set the ID here, or it will add the first task the first time it's called. The task themselves is just an ID and a task. And then on the page, you can see the page has code to render the list. And this is really the, the backend code. It injects the service, calls the service for the list. Let's figure out how to make this list last between browser sessions. First thing I'm going to do is go into NuGet Package Manager, manage my NuGet packages for the solution. And I'm going to search for SQLite WASM helper. And there's the package there. So we'll go ahead and install that to our to-do project. After we install it, one of the things it'll pull down is it pulls down all the dependencies in the Framework Core SQLite for the browser. But we need this version of SQLite to be built and embedded in the Blazor app. So we're going to add this WASM native build to true. And that'll ensure that that happens. The other thing we need to do is create a data context. That's how Entity Framework knows how to map your domain object to the database. So we're going to add a new class here, and we're going to call it to do context. We'll inherit that from DB context. And then there are two things we need. The first is a public constructor that takes in options. And this is so we can configure this independently of the class itself. In other words, instead of hard coding configuration inside of it, we can configure it in our startup. And all we do is we pass these down to the base class. And there's really nothing that we're doing inside of this. The second thing we need to do is tell EF Core what items it should be storing. And that's really to do items. I'm just going to initialize with null bang. Now we have a DB context. We need to register and configure it. And if you're familiar with doing add DB context or add DB context factory, this will be similar, but we have a special extension method specifically for this case of the Blazor WebAssembly. So I'm going to do using SQLite WASM helper, and then I'm able to do builder services add SQLite WASM DB context factory. So this is a special factory and I'll get into why in a moment. But we're going to do our to do context and WebAssembly has a virtual file system. So to many applications, it looks just like they're on a regular file system, even though it's in memory. So for SQLite, we're going to tell SQLite we want a data source and we're going to give it a file name, even though it's really a virtual file name. So I'm going to do SQLite 3. So now context factory is registered. Let's change our service to use that DB context. I'm going to get rid of that list in a second, but first I want to do a read only I SQL WASM DB context factory of to do context. And then we'll create a constructor so we can let dependency injection inject that service for us. And we just set our DB factory equal to that factory. So now that's available to us. So in our get task async, the very first thing I'm going to do is a using. And I'm going to await the factories create DB context async. So that gets me a DB context to work with. Then instead of to do items, I'm going to use the actual entities. So now what I'm going to do is if there's any of these, I'm going to go ahead and add. And I don't need to generate the ID because the database will handle that for me. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and add here. And again, we don't need to set the ID. And then we need to save it and we need to return the list. 
we need to make sure we cast it to list so it's materialized before the data context goes out of scope. And then we can get rid of our list. So we've just injected the factory into our service and used the service instead of the in-memory list. There should be no changes necessary to the page that uses this because it's just relying on the service. So the service sort of hides that implementation detail. If you'll notice in my build, I'm doing some WASM builds and linking because I added that tag to the project file. And now we are in the application. And you can see first task created, task added. I'm going to do a refresh, going to navigate off and come back. Now this time I'm going to do a full refresh. And you can see my data persisted. Let's stop the application and rerun it. And you can see, again, it's persisted that. Let me show you where the database is stored. I'm going to open my dev tools. I'm going to go to application cache storage and SQLite WASM helper. And you can see we've got content here. And notice this is under data cache to dos.db. So let's go ahead and access that. First thing I'm going to do is open the cache. So I'm going to say cache equals await caches. And caches is an API provided by the browser. And we give it the name of the cache, which is SQLite WASM helper. And that gives us access to the cache. Next, we need access to that database file. Now it's stored just like it, as if it was a URL that you access to download a link. So I'm gonna say response equals await cache match and that key. Now if we look at our response, we can see that it has this 200 okay true. So the database itself is stored in a blob. So I'm going to say my blob is await response blob. So this will pull the blob out of the response. And last but not least, let's say I want to download it to work with it and inspect it. What I can do is use a built-in browser API called create object URL. If I pass it the blob, I'm going to get a link that when I click on that link is going to give me a download that is the SQLite database and then I can open it and work with it. So hopefully this is useful to you. Remember the users can gain access this to this just like I can and this cache can be very easily cleared. In fact all I have to do is come here to storage, clear site data, and it's wiped away. So don't use it to store sensitive information or information that needs to last long. If it is a local cache that's fine otherwise you need to synchronize it externally.